Every year when it comes to the NFL draft, we'll talk about whether prospects should declare or not. And specifically the thought process being if you're a first round pick, you probably should declare anything after that. You should in theory go back to school another year, improve your game, get better at your craft and improve your draft stock. And sometimes that works that way and sometimes it doesn't. And there's also a point in time where sometimes if you were thought you're going to be like a second or third round pick, it does make sense to declare because you may have some limitations that prevent you from ever being a first round pick anyway. So if that's the case, why not go ahead and get that money a year earlier? Furthermore, you could potentially go back to school, give teams another year of film on you and potentially be worse off for your draft stock, not just kind of lateral the same, you could potentially be worse off. And an example of this to me is Luke Falk from Washington State. If he would have declared last year, he may very well have been like a third round pick. The way I look at his draft stock now with another year of being able to go through film and such, I think he's a day three pick. I think, honestly, he was a day three talent to begin with. Um, but here's an example of, I don't know that going back to school in 2017 did anything to change anybody's mind about him. And in fact, when you factor in getting benched a couple of times during the season, it probably, if anything, hindered his draft stock a little bit, uh, decreased his draft stock a little bit, not increased it and improved it. So that's a cautionary tale. But when you look at Luke Falk, what does he bring to the table as a prospect? I'm going to start off his strengths. He's got decent size for the position. Not phenomenal, great size. What is he, like 6'3", maybe 2'10", 2'15"? But he's got enough size where you feel confident he'd be able to hold up at the NFL level, uh, similarly to how he did at the college level. He's also very, very smooth mechanically. Like we talk about Josh Rosen and one of his strengths would be his mechanics. Luke Falk is also really, really good mechanically. I don't think he gets talked about enough for how good his mechanics are as a pocket passer. And sometimes when you talk about these guys that play in these air raid spread type of systems, their mechanics aren't always the best. But his are, you could actually see where he might be able to make the conversion to be more of a traditional drop back passer and be able to get his timing of his steps down, be able to get his release right, uh, use his entire body in his throwing motion consistently. All these things that Luke Falk did while he was the starter at Washington State. I also feel like his pocket presence is very good. Again, sometimes this can be tough to gauge when you're talking about spread quarterbacks when you're already in the shotgun, not to mention that you play with a lot of one read, quick read and throw type of situations. But Falk didn't have that as much in 2017. He, he was patient in the pocket, um, very, very good in terms of standing tough in the pocket. Like he's a really tough kid. That was one thing that did come across to me on film is this is a guy that's willing with the pass rush bearing down in his face and coming at him from the sides to stand tall, take that extra tenth or two tenths of a second and make sure that his guy can get to a spot where he can throw the ball and get it to him. I mean, he's really tough in the pocket, a little bit of movement within the pocket, not a ton, but he does have that small knack to be able to create just a little bit of extra time. But most importantly of all, and impressively to me, he's a guy that can get hit, hit hard, and come back and do it again. And I'll also say this, when we talk about the old Texas Tech system at Washington State with Mike Leach, the old Mike Leach air raid system is typically those quarterbacks do not transition well to the NFL level in part because of the way the system is run, the limited responsibilities that they really have. But you could see with Luke Falk as 2016 and into 2017, he got more and more responsibility. Mike Leach deferred more and more to Luke Falk and allowed him to go more through his progressions. He saw the field better than your typical Texas Tech quarterback did. He made adjustments. He made some audibles. Again, stuff that you wouldn't associate with the Mike Leach system. Um, Luke Falk did more than your standard air raid quarterback. I don't know if that's enough for the NFL level, but he did do more. So where there are going to be concerns about his transition from that system that hasn't produced a lot of successful NFL quarterbacks, especially starters, to the NFL level, it will, it will not be as much of a hindrance for Luke Falk as it has been for others over the years. Now that said... I have significant concerns about Luke Falk and his ability to transition to the NFL level. Number one, his serious lack of mobility and running ability. And it's kind of funny because on the one hand, we get enamored with athleticism, we get enamored with mobility. Then on the flip side, you see 
more traditional pocket passers like Tom Brady get to as many Super Bowls as he has. You see Matt Ryan get his team to the Super Bowl. A few years back, Joe Flacco is not really a great athlete. He can move every once in a while, but he's a guy that stood primarily in the pocket and got it done. Big Ben has a little bit of wiggle, but not much. He gets it done. Drew Brees is not a natural scrambler by any sense of the imagination. He can move his feet just a little, but again, primarily making their living in the pocket. And these are guys that tend to stay healthy. These are the guys that have been quite successful. Uh, but it is still a concern that Luke Falk really struggles to move his feet. Luke Falk really struggles to avoid the rush. Luke Falk just really is not much of a threat to run the football. And in today's NFL, you like to have a guy that is some type of a threat as a runner because it forces the defense to potentially have to keep a spy in. It could change the defense. You can put a greater emphasis on contain versus rush. Having a mobile athletic guy can cause some problems. Well, as a defense, you don't have to worry about that with Luke Fall because he's not going to do any of those things. I also found his decision-making to be really lacking. He holds onto the ball way too long. You know, similar to a Big Ben where he's got toughness in the pocket for days and he's willing to fight and scrap and hang in there to the last possible second. But there are times where he kills his team with a back-breaking sack, potentially putting the ball at risk because he's hung in the pocket too damn long. Throw the ball away. And he also took way too many risks, like thinking his arm talent was significantly better than what it really was. He will have to get better in his decision-making having a quicker internal clock in the pocket, knowing when to just go with the first read, knowing when to throw the ball away, knowing when maybe to sometimes even, yeah, eat the sack and potentially not make a bigger, worse play happen for your team. Um, one thing I also was surprised at as I watched Falk more and more, I thought his accuracy was really lacking. All He was all over the place with the ball. He really, really was. If you go back and watch, his accuracy is very lacking. I thought his accuracy playing in that system, even if I was going to say, well, it could be a question because of the system he played in, it artificially padded his stats. He just was not naturally a very accurate guy. His ball placement in particular being very disappointing. Far too many times he just missed guys that he shouldn't have missed. And then other times where he threw it way off target where a receiver would have to make a very athletic play in order to adjust. When you don't have special arm talent to begin with, you better be pinpoint. Luke Falk is not pinpoint. Which brings me to I feel like even though I didn't grade it as his biggest concern or weakness, that would have been the lack of mobility and running ability, Luke Falk's real lack of functional NFL arm strength concerns me significantly. I, I thought Mason Rudolph had a weak arm until I watched Luke Falk, and I said, oh my God, his arm is even weaker. I just don't see where he's going to be a guy at the NFL level that can consistently stretch defenses vertically down the field. And I'm not sure that he's going to make and be able to make the 15 to 20 yard out without having to put a ton of air on the ball, which is incredibly risky. I mean, those are tough throws into tight windows anyways. And the fact is Luke Falk is going to have to throw with such anticipation, with such accuracy that he currently does not have. I'm just really, really concerned that that arm strength will be significantly limiting to him and his potential NFL upside. And when you look at Luke Falk overall, like I said, he does come from a system that doesn't produce NFL quarterbacks. That doesn't mean that he can't be, but it will be a concern for teams because there are things about the old Mike Leach air raid system that just don't translate very well. What I'm more concerned about, though, is his lack of arm strength and accuracy severely limiting his upside. It's one thing if you don't have a howitzer as an arm. It's another thing when you need to have a sniper rifle of an arm and instead you have a machine gun and you're just blasting it all over the place. And when you don't have either one of them in any great abundance, that's a real significant concern. And I just can't envision a lot of teams thinking he has starter upside at the NFL level. And, and that's kind of how I look at Luke Falk right now. I look at him as an NFL backup maybe an average to above average backup, who two, three years down the road, if he gets more accurate, if he gets stronger in terms of his arm strength, he might have some starter potential. But even then, just how much starter potential is he going to have? What do you have to do to change your system to fit it around him? And how much work is it going to take? And is that work ultimately going to be worth the payoff? And I don't know that it is. That's not to say automatically that he isn't. 
As I watched Luke Falk, you know who he really reminded me of? And it was ironic, you know, a little bit after I completed the scouting report on him, this guy was on the news because he's going to serve a few months in prison for fraud. And I'm not comparing Luke Falk to that. But in terms of actually on the field, his his game, his makeup as a quarterback, he reminds me a lot of Shane Matthews. If you remember Shane Matthews, former Bears backup, that's where he had his most notoriety in the NFL. Um, he was a guy that came from Spurrier's fun and gun system, uh, but lacked arm strength, lacked mobility. He was a smart guy, just like Luke Falk is a smart guy, had a good understanding of the game, um, didn't take a ton of risks and a ton of chances, even though Luke Falk takes more risks and takes more chances and they don't pay off very well. But Matthews really lacked and of arm strength. Like for Shane Matthews, 40 yards down the field was a real Hail Mary, and you'd be lucky to get it. Where you, where you wanted him was in a position where he was managing the game. He didn't turn over the ball a lot. He didn't put the ball at risk a lot. And on third and six, he could maybe complete a five-yard flat pattern, and your receiver gets the first down. That's the type of guy that Shane Matthews was. He wasn't scaring anybody with his arm. It's just... It was really hard to beat him in terms of getting him to make a bunch of mistakes. But he was always going to be a guy, even as your starter, you're instantly looking to replace. That's who Luke Falk reminds me of. And that's why my grade on him, 79.275, is as a fifth rounder. Because when I look at a guy and I'm talking about quarterbacks and trying to draft, even in day three when I'm talking about upside, I just don't see a significant amount of upside with Luke Falk physically. And that matters. Now granted... People said the same thing once about Tom Brady. He kept getting benched for Drew Henson. He was drafted in the sixth round in the 2000 draft, and he'll be a first battle Hall of Famer. He's a five-time Super Bowl champion and will go down as the greatest to ever play the position. So sometimes we know what we know, and sometimes we don't know what we do, don't know, and sometimes we just get it ass wrong. And I may get it ass wrong with Luke Falk, but like I said, right now, based off of what I've seen over the past two years, and as I graded him out, I just didn't see it. I see a guy like Shane Matthews that has some length of an NFL career. Occasionally you play him here and there, but you really don't ever envision him being a starting quarterback that you win a bunch of games because of or even with.